Here's an interesting equation. If you have a fraction in front of parentheses in an equation like that, um, you would automatically want to apply the distributive property. And that is not the best method, in fact, but we'll go ahead and do it and just show you what happens. Multiply a quarter in like that, and you know, this is perfectly fine. We'll get a quarter x plus quarter times 4 over 1 is 4 thirds equals 5, okay? Uh, and this is fine. It's just that we're stuck with having to deal with these fractions, aren't we? So subtract 4 over 3 from both sides. And we've got 5, which, of course, is 5 over 1. So I'll turn that to thirds, multiplied by 3 over 3. And that is 15 thirds. So we have 15 thirds minus 4 thirds. On the left-hand side, that's 11 thirds. So we have uh, 1 third x, or you could think of it as, you know, x over 3, same thing. But a third x, let's say, equals 11 thirds. Now we've got to get x by itself. And we've already practiced these where the best thing to do in this case is instead of dividing by a third, multiply by 3 over 1 on both sides. And now we have 3 over 3x, which of course is 1x, right? So 1x or x equals, and these, these three cross cancel equals 11. And so that's your answer, right? Um, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with this method. That is actually the answer. But, uh, you know, you're, you're dealing with fractions. Another method is to turn the fraction into a decimal. But the problem is that one third is 0 0.3333 and goes on forever. So you've got to round it. I mean, you can't write this forever. So unless you round it to 0 0.333, four of them, then you're going to have a bit of error. I mean, usually people round it to 0 0.33, for example, then multiply it by x plus 4 equals 5. Okay, then they apply the distributive property and they get 0 0.33x plus 4 times that is, and plug it in your calculator, is um, 1.33, of course, approximately, and that's equal to 5. Then we go ahead and subtract 1.33 from both sides, and we get 0 0.33x equals five minus that um, 3.67 you know and again you know there's a lot of writing isn't it also apart from the fact that we're not going to get a perfect answer because we had to round the decimal at the beginning you know there's a lot of writing x equals um, and plug that in the calculator because it'll be a little bit off whoops how come I haven't done that yet okay turn it on clear 3.67 oops 3.67 divided by 0 0.33, press enter. So, you know, what do we get? 11.1212, uh, da, 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 da. So, using decimals, it's a lot of writing, and we don't have the perfect answer. We have 11.1212. That is not, I mean, the answer should be 11. We should have, uh, and they should have wrote this as x equals 11. That, that is the answer, not 11.12. The best method for these is, in fact, to do this. Multiply the left-hand side by 3 over 1. Okay. Then multiply the right-hand side also by 3 over 1. So do the same thing to both sides. Multiply both sides by a number. That's okay. You're allowed to do that as long as you do the same thing to both sides. Now what happens is you can do, you get this. 3 over 1 times 1 over 3 is three-thirds, which is one. So we end up with one times x plus four equals five times three fifteen. Or in other words, you know, just x plus four equals fifteen. Now just subtract four from both sides, and here we go, x equals eleven. So what do you think? I mean, for me, this is definitely the preferable method. Also, you know, I'll show you if you have 1 over n times x plus b equals c, which we'll see later on in, in algebra, you know, you, you're going to have to solve lots of things where you don't even have numbers. So, I mean, you can't use the decimal method if you have letters and no numbers. Um, again, the fraction method is going to be more difficult with letters. 
So everything I show you is for a reason. I do teach all the way to Math 111. So, you know, I know what is the best. I have a good idea what the best methods are. So if I multiply this by n over 1 on both sides, you see, or n, same thing, then these n's cross cancel and I get x plus b equals c n and now all I have to do to find x is subtract b. So re it's really not a big deal. x equals c n minus b. And you know the more we practice these things with numbers the easier it will be with letters later on. So that's the whole goal. And again another reason to not be um, relying on your calculator for basic calculations. The calculator is fantastic for graphing, you know, which we'll see later. Graphing equations, absolutely brilliant. And you know, we'll be practicing this at the end of the at the end of the course. But for now, all basic calculations should be done by hand. Okay. Another example. Okay, let's take another example. 1 seventh times 2 minus x in parentheses is equal to negative 1. Okay, we're looking for x. And again, the method that is best to use, I hope I've convinced you, is called multiply both sides by the denominator that you see in the equation. In this equation, we have a bunch of things. We have a fraction, 1 seventh. What's the denominator? The denominator is 7. What we can do is multiply both sides by 7, or 7 over 1, okay? Multiply both sides by 7 over 1, and 7 gets multiplied by this, and we get 7 sevenths, or 1, times 2 minus x, which is just, of course, 2 minus x. And negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Now we just have to solve for x. So subtract 2 from both sides. Uh, by the way, one of the big questions is why don't we multiply the 7 by the 2 minus x as well. I'll explain that at the end of the example. And we get these make 0. And by the way, oh, and on this side we have negative 7, negative 2 is negative 9, right? And here we should be left with negative x, okay? Because this negative carries down. It doesn't disappear anywhere. It stays there. Or you could think of this subtraction sign as plus negative. So you have 2 plus negative x, and the negative x is still there. Okay. Now, the coefficient on this, of course, is what's the coefficient? The coefficient of negative x is negative 1. So x has been multiplied by negative 1. Divide by negative 1 on both sides. Get x by itself. x now equals negative over negative positive 9. Okay, And that is the right answer, and you can check it. 1 seventh times um, 2 minus 9 is 1 seventh times negative 7, which gives 7 over, which is negative 7 over 7, negative 1. So that is the correct answer if you check it. Um, so the question is when I do this, uh, 7 over 1 times 1 seventh, and then you've got 2 minus x. Uh, you know, this, okay, this makes 7 over 7, we're clear on that, but why don't we multiply the 7 by this as well, and then go ahead, so, so okay, yeah, let's get 7 sevenths, which is 1, but also do this, 7 times 2 minus x, and then get, you know, 14 minus 7x, so why is this correct, incorrect, it is incorrect, why is it incorrect, let's try and explain that, well, Well, here's a reason. If you had three numbers being multiplied, if you had 7 uh, multiplied by 3 and then multiplied by um, 2, let's say, do we multiply 7 and 3 to get 21 and then times 2 is 42? Or do we do this? Do we go 7 times 3 times 2, do we go 7 times 3 is 21, and then 7 times 2 is 14, and then multiply both of these to get a big number, uh, 21 times 14, 100, uh, let's see, 21 times, oops, two, 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 times 14, which would give, you know, 294. So, if we are multiplying three numbers, don't we just multiply the first two, and then get that uh, 
product and then multiply that by the next number? This is correct, isn't it? You don't multiply in like that, right? Does that make sense? Definitely not correct there, okay? And it's the same with uh, what we have, which is 7 uh, times 1 seventh times 2 minus x. This is a number, this is a number, and this is a number. You're multiplying this, this, and this number. So the, the best thing to do is multiply the first two first to get 7 sevenths, and then multiply that by the 2 minus x, okay? So you multiply these two first and then times this, which is what we did. Now, let's have a look at this equation. 3 quarters times 5 minus x equals negative 1. Same method. Multiply both sides by the denominator. What is the denominator in that equation? What is the fraction? The fraction is 3 quarters. The denominator is 4. So let's multiply both sides by 4. Or 4 over 1, just to help us multiply these fractions. Multiply both sides by 4 over 1. So you're doing the same thing to both sides. Multiplying both sides by 4 over 1. Okay. Now, 4 over 1 times 3 over 4 is um, 12 over 4, which is 3, right? Or you can think these 4s cross cancel, and we're left with 3 times 5 minus x equals negative 4. Ha! Huh, we know how to solve this, right? We just practiced these earlier. So multiply 3 in, I'll just do it uh, quickly, 15 minus 3x equals negative 4. Of course, go ahead and press pause, see if you can get the right answer on this. So press pause and I'll, I'll do it quickly. That's the factor 15, you're left with negative 3x. And these negative 4, negative 15 makes negative 19. And then divide both sides by negative 3. Negative over negative positive 3 over 3 is 1. And we have 1x equals negative over negative positive 19 thirds. And that is correct. If you plug it in here, you'll find that it is correct. Okay. And I guess I was going to do one more example. Okay. So let's have a look at this one. 5 eighths times 3 minus 2x equals negative 2. Again, the trick is, what is the denominator in the, in the equation? The denominator is 8. So multiply both sides by the denominator. 8, or 8 over 1. Okay? Multiply both sides by 8, or 8 over 1. And again, these 8s now cross cancel, and we're left with 5 times 3 minus 2x equals... And this is negative 2 over 1 times 8 over 1, which is negative 16 over 1, or just negative 16. And you know how to solve it from here. So press pause and do it, and then I'll, I'll do it also. So you should have multiplied 5 in. Got 15 minus 10x equals negative 16. Subtract the 15. Get negative 10x equals negative 31. Negative 16 and negative 15 is negative 31. This negative carries down. It doesn't disappear anywhere. So divide both sides by negative 10. And negative over negative positive 10 over 10 is 1. 1x one equals negative over negative positive 31 over 10. Okay? And that should work out if you check it. 